uh, we have to cover the history of computers. Now this history uh, mainly focus on to an area like this. We know that uh, at this moment, now we are in 2021, year 2021. Then in this year, we are using a device called as computer. But this machine came into the world with many different research, many different experiments and failures, successing, upgrading, improvements. Now we are using a machine uh, called as computer. So we all are happy with that. Again, the other thing we know here is this is not the end of the computer. This will further develop. You can remember that when you were born, when you were in grade five, when you were in grade four, there were computers. So then compared to those computers, the computers you use today are far better than that. They are quicker. They are with more features than that. So then uh, likewise, this is improving. So then this development of the computer, what we experience today has been uh, started from very long ago from a very primitive environment. Then this is what uh, the discussion is, how this computer, the machine computer had been developed into the level we use today. So then this history starts from um, long ago. Sometimes uh, you people say uh, 1940s uh, is the starting of computer. Even uh, there are machines uh, made be earlier than some evidence are not there, but there are sayings like that. And even um, before that, we had the requirement how this came and this development, how we are going to categorize them into generations. So then this is also an another area where the paper is going to test you. And also that's a certain history lesson. So then uh, in my side, I don't like these history lessons. Uh, one thing is uh, here they have some technical areas. But mostly, we must memorize what had happened there and what were the development. Like us, just memory things are there. That's why I am uh, not uh, trying to do this in a usual way. Our usual way is uh, giving, explaining the things and giving notes. You may write it. So then uh, this time I have changed the pattern. Uh, so I have sent you the tutorial for them. So it's already in your hands. Then in the uh, tutorial, uh, the uh, first few pages, the initial pages uh, are with the history of computers. So it has the most important areas related to our history. And then uh, if you want some new things, then what is already written there, they are, they are already printed letters. So if you want some more things, uh, you may take down in uh, parallel that, or else you can use sticky notes and paste it, or else you can use some other blank area in the tutorial and write them. Sometimes if I feel uh, that's any important thing, I'll give you a separate note. So therefore, you may continue your note in this way with the printed note, since uh, it has very less technical things for you to understand than the earlier works we do. Then uh, it will save our time as a well less, uh, no need to uh, spend too much of time writing uh, lengthy essays regarding the history. Okay, now uh, that's what uh, the concepts we should uh, cover at this moment. Right. Now, uh, regarding our history, uh, this is how uh, it starts. Uh, normally, uh, when you go to um, the machines that were invented uh, in long ago, so then uh, the first machine that the people have reported was the abacus. So we know abacus that. You use that in grade five, grade three, somewhere to uh, do some mathematical works in your school level, didn't you? You know this abacus? Right, so then this was uh, the machine that was invented by the humans. Uh, very long ago. So that's the first machine that was reported, but it has no any computer. This is also very important equipment. Why? Uh, this was uh, the first machine that was reported in the history to support mathematical works. And uh, simply this was reported to be invented on around 300 BC, before Christ. So even before the um, Jesus, so in, uh, this was invented by Babylonians. That's what the uh, saying is. 
we don't know the real truth uh, these are just expectations and later on uh, people uh, found different machines not machines really so people found a fire can you remember that then uh, the civilization was started likewise and later people were uh, found the wheel so whenever the wheel was found that was uh, a big invention to the humans what they did was this wheel had been used to make their works easier so then they plug that or they connect this wheel into a certain arm and we can uh, keep a huge load on it and then we can pull it and even this wheel can be used to uh, as a pulley to drain water from a uh, certain uh, deep well and uh, to uh, carry things here and there so then wheel was uh, another invention in our timeline after the abacus and after that uh, these uh, wheels were developed further to uh, the level of pulley and uh, to the level of some other mechanical equipments so like guys uh, there were many developments based on the wheel right then after that uh, people uh, might have uh, people started another equipment motor and uh, some machines were there so likewise this is what uh, the basic development of our computer not computer the technology then uh, that development is going to be categorized into few uh, levels that's what represent in our presentation history of computers so then uh, the development of the technology not only icd has been categorized into four eras not generations he is talking about full computer full uh, machines one is called as pre mechanical era so before the mechanics was found then mechanical era during this period of time then electronic mechanical era as well as electronic era so nowadays we are in electronic era all our works are based on electronic no mechanical things are what are mechanical things mechanics simply mechanical means some uh, rotating items mechanics as an example uh, when you go for our smartphone is this a mechanical object or not smartphone is it a mechanical object or not yes or no i need your answer does it have some rotating movable items or no within the smartphone have you ever heard that uh, inside the smartphone there's a motor to uh, move things here and there there are arms moving here and there upside down no right so vibration is an extra feature and everything she's not essential but uh, for the function of the smartphone we don't need any movable items so we don't need to use a motor there we don't need to use a wheel there therefore this is not mechanical but when you go for a washing machine is that a mechanical equipment washing machine mechanical definitely why inside the washing machine there are motors and they are rotating here and there so you see a big um, that that's a main function therefore this is a mechanical object so uh, now we are in electronic era that means most of our devices are completely based on electronics circuits but no movable items are used in earlier to that we have elect uh, electronic mechanical era right? then that is uh, combined with mechanics plus electronics electronic mechanical era then mechanical era means is completely mechanical so no electronics is there it's just like uh, 19 uh, no 1450s as well as around 1840s right now uh, then i will see uh, what this uh, pre mechanical era and what are the machines are uh, like right then uh, that that's a certain uh, breakdown based on uh, the eras and after that whenever the word computer our machine is called as computer so whenever the machine computer is considered this is a certain job title a job in the olden days not a machine so the job computer then you may be appointed as a computer then. 
you will be paying salary c1 why that's your designation just like manager accountant there's a, a title called as computer what they are responsibility is to perform calculations computing then there are uh, organizations there are situations where huge calculations are required just like uh, you know about those uh, astrological people that's after people who just predict the future so even um, in the, you, i don't you know about it that's in the reason past they have said that we, especially in the election period they said on this party will win from this much of uh, votes so this is my prediction so there are people who are predicting like that right this uh, astrological people so don't know whether they are true or false somehow uh, astrology is based on mathematics so then uh, there are many more calculations going on and based on the results they obtain if the result is around 5 to 10 uh, then we can say that is good if it is more than 10 uh, uh, it's bad Is less than uh, five, not applicable. Like as there are theories in this uh, astrology. So then the astrological person who is predicting the future, he is expert in making decisions, but he is not an expert in doing calculations. Then what he does is he is hiring a person called as computer. Then whenever there is a calculation to be done, the person will give that to the computer. He is manually calculating and giving me the answer. Based on that, I'll predict the future. You have this thing. You have this thing. Like us. So then we had that requirement, especially in uh, the astrological, especially in astrological uh, environment. And on the other way around, you can remember that uh, whenever uh, finding paths, finding roads, especially by ships, these talk about old days, right? Your nineties or even earlier than. So then, how did those uh, ships, old ships, find the path, the direction where should they go? They didn't have compass those days. You have seen, you have seen some old films. You have read, read some um, uh, novels. There they have told how they have found the path in ships. How did they? No, no. GPS is it there? Nineties GPS was there. You know this. So then uh, those people observe the star patterns during the night. Yes, then uh, they observe the stars and they'll uh, do calculations. This star is here. This star is here. Then uh, the distance is somewhere like that, and the shadow comes like this. Like uh, we don't know. So they'll do calculations. And based on that, they'll find that to reach this destination, this is the pathway that we have to move. Right. So then, uh, there again, uh, we need to have a certain person uh, to find the path, especially by the ships. So in the ship, there should be a person called as computer. Why right? he is expert in doing calculations, especially when finding the pathway to the destination. And what I want to say is, during this time period, the world has the requirement of performing calculations then they appointed the person or job title called as computer now in it <laughs> whenever a human is appointed as a computer to do this now there are troubles for the company why people will make mistakes so they demand they say tomorrow i'm not i'm absent i have been i don't come then uh, the astrological person has to stop the job why that person is not there and ships has to uh, stop the sailing so likewise uh, there are troubles uh, with the humans then uh, the people wanted to invent uh, a machine to uh, do these calculations so during that time period based on that requirement they have invented different different machines called as difference engine even a holarith desk and even a mark 1 and uh, likewise due to different uh, inventions we came up with a machine called as computer today right so then this is how uh, the history regarding the word computer how it came to the world that's clear to you and i think uh, these are written into the note or the printed note therefore no trouble with that the first computer were people computer was a job title the, the job was to repetitive uh, do calculations 
mainly women did this so this was a certain old picture where such an incident take place these calculations are for navigational tables tide charts and even planetary positions and astrological almanacs so then uh, find the planetary planetary positions you know, and uh, do these astrology astrological works so we uh, had this then uh, this is uh, a certain uh, picture of a certain uh, organization how uh, the people did these calculations and uh, their main job was to do the calculation that's all from the time they go to the work they are doing calculations then uh, again the first company were people the job was to do uh, only addition and multiplications human made errors while doing those calculations careless mistakes very slow then uh, there was a requirement of having a mechanical method hari then uh, abacus was uh, said to be as uh, the first machine to support calculations this was around 300 bc before christ oldest uh, was used in this much by babylonians the value is uh, to aid memory of uh, the calculations we know what uh, the use of Ab albacus right so when we go for uh, the abacus we know that uh, after counting this we put uh, one from here to there that's to uh, keep the memory the positions so we don't need to uh, we know this right okay that's what uh, the abacus is it was very long ago then uh, after that uh, there was a machine came to the world called as calculating clock i hope that these details are there in the printed version you have the printed version so the same, same text i have added to the slides are written in the printed version as well is yes, abacus uh, we have the instruction there in the printed version and then uh, analytical engine yes so then uh, this was uh, not there uh, the one i am telling here calculating clock this was invented in uh, 1623 uh, a person called as uh, wilhelm schickard then at this somewhere into the north pole calculating clock was invented in uh, 1623 then uh, it's said to be as first gear driven calculating machine then you see that uh, in this machine uh, some gears are there on corners so with those we don't know how to operate that simply we can assume that by moving gears up and down it may represent characters numbers and they will calculate uh, the things and represent the output somehow so this was uh, by a german professor uh, wilhelm schickard he is the one inventor and this had to be as uh, first gear driven calculating machine and this was invented in 1623 very long ago now we are 2400 years ago this machine came into the world right after that 1642 pascaline came into the world so this is uh, another important machine uh, in our history and there are questions based on that as well this was invented by Uh, a scientist called as simply is a mathematician called as bayes pascal now this person has uh, invented many more theories as well in maths you can remember that pascal theory likewise and even physics so uh, he invented this machine at uh, the age of 19 when he was 19 uh, he invented that i think you people are also getting closer to 19 right then invent something okay so this is called as a gear driven one function calculator this is also a gear driven one so you may move the gears or this uh, switches here and there and uh, do the addition then are these mechanical machines or are these electrical machines are these mechanical machines or electrical machines mechanics or electrical the abacus is that being powered or is that just a uh, gear driven equipment is mechanical pure mechanical no power is required it's fully mechanic so you just move it here rotate it here rotate it here and the result will be there they are complete mechanical machines he invented that this was uh, still uh, very long ago right 1642 so during that time they have never think of machine like computer we use today that was around uh, 400 years ago right so this is uh, another machine now these are not that important into our paper that's what uh, i have not added them into the paper uh, this whatever our uh, 
tutorial but uh, just learn then uh, but here we uh, the important thing is fast is important that's our most important machine uh, among these then uh, after another now this is 1642 after 30 years step reckoner came that's an advanced machine for pascaline so pascaline was here it is one function only addition then uh, this is uh, ready to uh, continue with four function that means addition is supported subtraction multiplication division all were supported by this machine uh, when compared to the pascaline and this was uh, invented by german scientist called as gottfried wilhelm leibniz leibniz so this was using punch cards so then this is the first time where the punch card technology came into the world we will see what these punch cards are here these are punch cards so they are some thick cardboard like materials where they have punch you see that this this cardboard has a uh, pattern of punch and this has another pattern of punch so they are different from one another that means uh, the punch pattern available in the cardboard will determine the character we use if we have the punch pattern like this this may be the letter a representation and if you go for uh, another punch pattern like this this called as letter b then if i want to put uh, letter a into the machine we put this card we take this card and put it into the relevant area then the system will detect this as letter a system will detect as letter b even numbers are the same so during that time the punch card technology was used uh, by the machine called as step reckoner so this was based on our punch cards so hope that you are clear with that right next thing is uh, difference engine came into the world that is in 18th century this 16th ne 1674 this is going to be 200 uh, years after now charles babbage uh, came into the picture now so uh, we have a certain uh, importance of that person what is importance charles babbage is treated as the father of the computer so he invented the machine called as difference engine this is his machine in the uh, time period 1822 so during that time period he has uh, invented the machine called as difference engine then uh, next thing is uh, large size of a room this was uh, large like a room very large machine right think of your room so that machine is uh, large like your room and it was a stream steam driven machine what is steam you know that uh, we have uh, steam trains what is running that steam train so in that uh, we have a bit uh, big or huge water container and then under that uh, we use coal and coal is uh, burning and boiling the water when water is boiling this is making vapor so then that is uh, emitted from this tank with the high pressure so that pressure will uh, be able to rotate the wheels in the steam train that's the same technology used in this uh, difference engine by the charles babbage this vapor was uh, successfully put it into a certain wheel then those wheels are rotating and with that rotation the machine worked and giving you the output so then remember that difference engine is very important machine in our timeline in our history that is uh, the first machine made by the father of the computer in uh, around 1940s hope that you are clear so then this is his first machine called as difference engine 19 uh, sorry uh, 1822 so this is based on uh, steam technology and it is very large machine 
just like uh, a single room that's a the size then when it comes to the difference engine uh, this has more power than the earlier they are able to compute tables of numbers just like logarithmic tables, you did that in your O-level maths. Trigonometric tables. So what did you do? So just look at that chart and find the values. Now those charts were available inside the machine and uh, it had the uh, work on them on its own to give you the answers. Then compared to Pascal line, compared to previous uh, old machines, this is more powerful machine, which was invented in 1822 somewhere by the person called as Charles Babbage. Right. Then uh, that's his first machine. Now this is a certain sample uh, of this Charles Babbage machine. Uh, though you saw, saw, um, saw it like this, really uh, this is quite uh, larger. Now uh, I have found a certain video behind this as well uh, in YouTube. Mm. In behind me is Babbage's difference engine number two designed by Charles Babbage, mm. an English mathematician who is also known as the first computer pioneer. Uh, Babbage designed this machine between 1847 and 1849. Babbage, as we know, did not succeed in completing any of his own engines in, in their entirety. So there is no complete Babbage engine. This is the first physical realization of any of Babbage's complete designs in, in the metal. The engine itself weighs five tons. It consists of 8,000 parts made of bronze, cast iron and steel. And it measures 11 foot long and eight foot high. It's operated by cranking a handle. What it does is it, it calculates and tabulates the value of any seventh order polynomial in class of mathematical expressions to 31 decimal places. It not only uh, the machine is operated by cranking this handle, which is the principle it is here, and it progresses through the machine to the machine at the end of the cycle, and it is automatically transferred to this apparatus, which is the output apparatus. Here. Right. So, likewise, uh, you just uh, now they are really interesting, right? So I don't know about you people, but uh, in my side, um, so I uh, really enjoy such uh, technologies. Now you can um, imagine the world uh, during that time. That's the benefit here. Now, when you think of uh, that time period, around 18 somewhere, you didn't know the world. Then uh, by observing such technologies, you can just see that oh, this is the people um, who invented these technologies. What about the bronze there? How it had been? So like guys, um, even uh, for the other machine, uh, there are some videos like guys. Uh, okay, so then uh, you understand that. So difference engine is very important uh, in our timeline. Uh, that was invented by uh, Charles. You see that uh, these are the numbers available, right? That whatever the tables of numbers, and uh, they said that uh, they gave up, gave the answers uh, up to thirty-two decimal places. Uh, so then uh, check those uh, videos. I know that uh, definitely you have the access. You may do that. Right. Then uh, later, that was uh, in 1833, eh, sorry, 1822. Uh, uh, then after 10 years, around 10 years, 1833, again the same person, Charles Babbage, made another machine called as analytical engine. So that's also by uh, Charles Babbage. That was 10 years after that. It's called as a general purpose computer, very large in size powered by six steam engines. So it has more uh, steam engines than the earlier, high power consumption. It could store data as well. Again, it was using punch card technologies. Output was uh, similar to an equipment like printer. And uh, it introduced a concept, input output processing. So then uh, that's what uh, the use of this analytical engine. And uh, that was came after the difference engine. Sometimes in our exam question papers, they will ask this question. I just predicted, but still it was not there. Uh, now they ask, who are the inventors of this machine? Likewise. Sometimes they'll ask, which of the following is the second machine of Charles Babbage? What is the second machine of Charles Babbage? Difference engine, the analytical engine. Second machine made by Charles Babbage, the father of the computer analytical engine so his first machine was the difference engine then in my case i'm memorizing that uh, the charles webbage first machine is d difference engine his second machine is analytical engine a 
it goes in the reverse order first one is d second one is a reverse order so i can just say that uh, charles babbage made the world upside down so his inventions were again going in upside down order uh, to the alphabet so if d is at first he made a is next somehow memorize it right so this is the way where i am keeping that in my mind uh, now this is a very uh, powerful machine huge machine compared to the difference engine even so printers punch card technologies were used and uh, this with this analytical engine there are some other happenings uh, important for our history this source inventing the concept input processing and output charles babbage introduced the concept input output and processing using the machine called as analytical engine right so then uh, that's what the importance of this equipment hope that you are fine then this is uh, another picture of uh, analytical engine how it had work uh, you can just uh, get an idea again you can search for videos like earlier regarding that and this also based on punch cards you know that and based on the analytical engine that was in 1833 uh, there was another important uh, character coming into the computer development called as ada augusta lawless what is importance so this is a lady she is treated as the uh, first computer programmer in our entire computer history first computer programmer first programmer in the world is ada augusta lawless uh, is a friend of charles babbage and then uh, what she did was she wanted to uh, develop programs to the analytical engine so analytical engine was invented by charles babbage and uh, for that machine the programs are set by ada augusta lawless then remember that uh, this is a very important uh, milestone in our history uh, analytical engine was the second machine of charles babbage and with that the first computer programmer comes into the world called as ada augusta lawless right then uh, 1890s that means after another uh, 60 years 1890 somewhere another important machine comes into the world called as hollerith disk and this was also using punch card technology uh, and uh, the importance here is this machine uh, had been made uh, as a project to the government during that time period uh, 1890s during this time period uh, there was a census in america there was a census uh, in america then uh, to support that census the punch card technologies were used with the help of the machine called as hollerith disk so then there was a machine called as hollerith disk which is constructed uh, for a, to support the census in usa and this was uh, made by herman hollerith he is the inventor and he was the inventor of the ibm company we know that ibm computers nowadays it's a powerful and a highly wealthy company so in uh, holy this case uh, invented by the person called as herman hollerith who is the inventor of the company ibm even right so uh, that was another important thing uh, still it is using uh, punch cards like this this is sample machine uh, that's given here okay then after that uh, the 18th century was over now we are going to the 19th century uh, was invented by the person called as harvard dicon so you must memorize the inventors of each and every machine and how they came into the world what is the specialty of it the other thing that you need to invent uh, the you need to remember right harvard dicon try to develop uh, the babbage concept it could perform addition subtraction multiplication division and many other computations easily by even that uh, around 18 this thing these are supporting the tables of calculations thing then definitely this should be doing more than that uh, then uh, data input used by a typewriter so we didn't use uh, punch cards typewriter was there as to insert characters output was based on punch cards also this has printers as outputs 
then a weight was around uh, 5 tons 5000 kilograms used for uh, around 15 years time period this was a successful machine then considered as the first digital programmable computer and this is important here sometimes in the mcqs they last which of the following is treated as the first programmable digital computer then they'll give answers mark one even a charles uh, analytical engine difference engine they not select the answer correctly so mark one is treated as the first programmable digital computer then i take those important points and highlight them into the book now this was uh, that mark one uh, computer made by harvard Ica. so it's a huge machine and after that uh, this was came into the world in uh, 1939 then after one year abc computer came into the world half one year later that was uh, called as abc computer since Atenas of A, Berry computer, ABC. That's how the ABC came. Atenas of and Berry computer. So those two people uh, invented this machine, John Atenas of as a last Berry. This is treated as the first electronic digital computer. Then when you go to the earlier machine, first programmable digital computer. But this is going to be called as first electronic digital computer. That is the ABC computer. So remember this, uh, there's no any other alternative you must keep this in your mind then after that after another three years uh, ENIAC came into the world electronic numerical integrated and computer ENIAC this is also another common uh, machine tested in the paper electronic numerical integrated computer ENIAC Are first electronic uh, general purpose computer that's the other importance here this is treated as the first electronic general purpose computer. Are you? This is uh, using vacuum tubes. Right. Now, this is the first time the vacuum tube uh, came into our discussion. And uh, those machines are ready to uh, perform around 5000 calculations per second. Then, what is the speed of those computers? 5000 calculations per second means what is the speed? 5000 calculations per second then what is the speed of those computers yes 5000 hertz 5000 hertz means when you divide that by 1000 that's going to be 5 kilohertz speed that was in uh, during that time so then nowadays we are working with 5 gigahertz ne? then uh, ENIAC uh, in 1946 uh, electronic general purpose computer, vacuum tubes, speed is like this. High energy consumption, huge power consumption is there. This was constructed by a university of uh, Pennsylvania between uh, this time period by the scientist called as John Prespe Cart. This person is also very important. So ENIAC was invented by the person called as a Cart, John Prespe Cart. So then they are the important areas uh, behind this. Really, I have summarized almost important things to our paper. Now, these are the vacuum tubes. So such tubes are used uh, in these equipments. So you see that uh, these places are plugged with those vacuum tubes, right? So replacing uh, a certain uh, bad tube uh, means checking among ENIAC, right? So in the ENIAC, uh, there are many more uh, vacuum tubes. So they are going to replace them once one of them are burnt out. Then during this time period, 1945, right? So he is closer to uh, the time period where the Sri Lanka is going to get the independence. 1945. So we are just struggling to uh, for the independence. Uh, behind the scene, the world is trying to Im invent machines. Even uh, they are very important for the whole world. But still, uh, Sri Lanka didn't get any independence. Uh, we all know that, thing, right? Then a uh, one human architecture was uh, used by uh, modern computers too. So during this time period, a certain new invention came into the world called as von Neumann architecture. That was invented by uh, the scientist called as von Neumann. Then the value of this one is even the same architecture is used in our modern computers too. Even your laptop, my laptop, your smartphone is still based on this von Neumann architecture. What was the concept under that? 
it says that all instructions and data but they what are instructions held to the computer instructions are the programs isn't that instructions is programs software all the programs as well as the data you submit can be stored on the same storage within the computer that's how the one human architecture is every program we run all the data items we handle can be stored on the same storage they are going to be stored in the same storage inside the computer isn't that the rule we use uh, in our modern computers as well when it comes to the modern computer we have a cpu then we have the ram so in the ram is that holding all the running programs whenever something is executing or running is there right so here it is going to have the running programs what it hold the data to be executed as well if you give a sum just like 71 plus 91 they are also loaded into that so they not only running programs even the running data are also loaded into that ram is inside the computer that's what they say that one new man said that all the programs or all the instructions and all the data can be stored in the same memory within the computer fine within the same computer they are stored in same uh, memory called as ram so that's why uh, we respect uh, one new man architecture he didn't invent any machine the person one new man he didn't make any machine but he proposed that concept like our politicians what is that our politicians they don't do any work ne but they are talks how much useless talks ne likewise this person made a talk a concept he didn't make any machine but this concept is not like our politicians it was heavily important he will used and uh, we can't break that point as well what he told was all the programs all the instructions as well as all the running data are stored in a single memory within the same computer that's what they said then uh, remember this one human architecture he's tested uh, for many times and to represent the one human architecture we go for a drawing like this still i hope that you can understand this this is cu where do you have the cu control it is found inside the where inside the cpu we have the alu still found inside the cpu that's why in this uh, blue color line it says that this is the processor processor means the cpu this is going to be the cpu this is cpu inside the cpu we have the control unit alu and then this is the memory what is this memory uh, told here that is the ram in our computer so then this is what the drawing represent the one human architecture what he said was within the same memory within the same storage all the instructions as well as all the data can be stored in a computer so this is very important uh, you can't neglect this uh, keep that in your mind and uh, rewrite this again and uh, somehow uh, put that into your head definitely it will be tested when you are doing past papers you may find that how important this is in every paper the one human architecture comes right then i uh, hope that uh, you got it right but if you have doubts inform me right i'm just keep on uh, mentioning this uh, without giving any uh, work for you so again i don't think that uh, no need to give notes behind this the available sites or the whatever the details uh, in the tutorial are more than enough for your works then um, really uh, it is having the most important parts targeting to the paper then uh, we go to another machine edvac so one new man uh, came up with this concept this again remember that one new man didn't invent any machine he just came up with the concept only hurry then uh, that's in 1945 this is 1949 one year after our independence sri lankan independence so we people are celebrating the world is inventing new machines we are just spending our things only those people are inventing things 
So understand the difference between Sri Lankans and the other people. Okay. So then uh, during that time, Edback machine uh, came into the world. This was still invented by John Prespe Cart and another person called as John Mauchi. So then these two uh, characters are again very important into our development. Uh, John Mauchi, Prespe Cart. Uh, you can remember that Prespe Cart made another machine earlier. What was that? Oh, we didn't cut any. The okay, well, then. Or lacing, curl, whatever. Another one, bad. The what? The in the moon. I mean, clearly, another one. Another shock. Better, better, matter. Liye. Not that I didn't cut it. Cut. Carno. Game. Go. No. What? What? He did. Cut. Yeah. Answer. Then. Like. Like. Now. Mungi. The. What? Screen. Ne. Case. Zoom. Do. No. Phone. Ne. Case. Game. Go. No. I. Co. Cut. Car. Parents. Are. Good. Complain. Car. Ne. Oga. Damai. So. Reading. A. Pela. Me. Na. Man. Dan. Ne. Online. Car. No. Agi. Le. Na. Ma. Car. Ready. Game. Do. Ro. Ha. Car. No. No. Agu. No. Dan. Ne. Matanan Kaman Nepati, the Ogul Terum and Ogul Adams, and maybe lava useless is the Atakarala. Where game make a Gahano Hari, okay, Kikanikan Kajagala, Chatkarla Hari, but at the end of the Kinaka Yunga. Eka theater minister the noon, not the reminiscing Hamadam, Ekatanata. And the thing may cause second good up join only online Makarana Kela. Hena online make a productive one Sakaragan. I mean, I think the physical class is not a good Okay, somehow uh, I'll come back to the lesson. Uh, John Prespe Cart invented the earlier machine called as ENIAC. Earlier. And Edvac is also his invention. Uh, this is digital using ones and zeros. And this is uh, treated as the stored program computer. That's the invention. That's the importance here. Edvac is treated as the stored program computer. Is an improvement of ENIAC was done by the same person called as Eckhart. Right? So then this is treated as first stored program computer, digital computer, by this using ones and zeros. So electronic discrete uh, variable automatic computer, that's how the Edback came. Electronic discrete, discrete can be ones and zeros, right? Only two values. Discrete means ones as well as zero. Discrete. Electronic discrete variable automatic computer, Edback. The meaning. Then Unimac. After another three years, that was again by a cart. So you can just remember that those rhyming words: Eniac, Edvac, Unimac, all are by a cart. So now this is called as a universal automatic computer, Unimac, universal automatic computer, the first commercially available computer. That's the importance of this. So this is called as uh, the first commercially available computer. So now these machines were available for anyone to purchase commercially, just like the laptops we use today, the computers we use today. So they are commercially available. Likewise, uh, Unimac is the first machine which was commercially available to the people. And uh, this was by a cart and mouse. That's clear. Right. Now, uh, they are just the important machines in our timeline from uh, somewhere like 18th century to the uh, 19th century. Then uh, now we'll go to the categorization of these inventions or machines. Do we have to know years as well? Uh, no, but they know. Mostly they don't ask the year. They'll ask the inventor uh, what the machine and the importance of that one, the first digital computer. First programmable computer, first commercially available computer. They are the areas that you have to memorize, mostly not the year. But try to uh, keep the timeline in your head around, not exactly around in which year this was. Around. Now, I said that uh, the Edback, Unimac, they were came parallel with our independence. If you keep in that mind, our independence, Unimac, Edback, they came, that means somewhere 1940, 48, 50s, likewise. And uh, the Charles Webbage inventions are earlier to our independence. So likewise, just, just uh, keep a certain uh, rough idea. That's more than enough. No need to have the sharp uh, year when it goes. Fine. 
then uh, these generations of computers the available uh, the earlier development as i have said is going to be categorized into few categories called as generations first one is early computers they are before 90s you find that before 19th century uh, they were not that important in calculating clock abacus um, pascaline then first generation uh, computers are around 40s to 58 but the main point there is all those first generation computers are based on vacuum tube technology if the company is first generation they are based on vacuum tube technology that's the use vacuum tube then the second generation that was after this 1958 then around 1960s to 1964 somewhere very short time period and they are based on transistor technologies then third generation came with 65 to 70 another five years of time period they are based on integrated circuits ics then fourth generation we are today still in fourth generation that came after 1970s some fifth generation will be the today as well as the future based on ai so this generation breaking is based on the technology i use vacuum tube transistors ic's as a less uh, fourth generation is based on microprocessors that means cpus microprocessor technologies and then uh, fifth generation uh, uh, today and beyond so today as a less uh, the next the coming uh, technology is the fifth generation technologies that's what uh, the basis how we are going to break the generations and we'll just cover the generations further right so really uh, only one or two children are answering me um, others are very poor in responding but right, we'll go to the first generation computers they are completely based on vacuum tube that's a rule to be in first generation they are very large in size slow expensive and during that time they were made in uh, huge sizes large rooms so they are very large huge expenses they are and they were running based on such uh, steam engines or high power consumption was there then uh, lots of heat is made they were based on machine language machine language means it's uh, not our language just like english so we have to give commands according to the machine commands just like by pulling gears here and there or else using ones and zeros insertion using punch cards so they are not human readable languages like today in our computer the messages are given in english we are commanding the computer using microphone so our words they are not machine language so machine language is completely based on ones and zeros or else are using its own uh, equipments we have we are going to give inputs right then uh, lots of heat was generated works on a machine language input uh, was based on punch cards as well as tapes were there output came into the printouts and all the computers which are based on vacuum tubes they are belong to the first generation then examples univac eniac mark 1 then what about uh, the charles babbage machines analytical engine as well as difference engine are they belong to the first generation based on steam engines then uh, no transistors they are completely mechanical machines no transistors no vacuum tubes no ic's no complete mechanical therefore they are not in 1g they are before 1g early computers oh then see here end of the thoda ma vadhe ren eka nam prashna han right then in this case me early computers before 90s but if it is to be first generation around 1940s to 58 but the technology to be used should be vacuum tubes tube technology has to be there arani so if it is going to be tube uh, in one day so babbage inventions are not with tubes they are based on steam engines or uh, hand uh, movements so they are not uh, in one g understand that well 
That's first first generation computers. Now you can remember that uh, when we were talking about Unimac, Edvac, Eniac, they were based on tubes by John Pressbaker. And even Mark One before those two, uh, Mark One came. So then uh, these are still using vacuum tubes. They are falling under the first generation computers. One G. Hope that you are clear. Alright. Then these are some uh, vacuum tubes. We know that well. So quite larger, uh, holding their performances. Now we go to the second generation computers. Uh, then again, then the time period, the technology was the very technology is the most important point. If the computer is to be in two generation, second generation, that must be with transistors. Transistor technology has to be there. Then you know about transistors, right? In your all of us, you learned that thing. Like this PNP transistors, NPN transistors, you learned that. So then they are the equipments used in these machines. So they are highly efficient. Whenever you go for transistors, it says that the performance of a single transistor can replace the performance of around 40 tubes. So whenever you have one transistor, here we have one transistor, which is three pins. This can replace the job of 40 vacuum tubes. Then how powerful the transistor is and how small the transistor is. You know the transistor, you have seen that, right? In your school lab, you did that. Ne? Then now when you go to the transistor, that's very small, having three pins. So then you can hold it from your fingertips. Then this can replace the job of around uh, 40 vacuum tubes. All this will be uh, doing the job of the single transistor. Then you understand that this is very small. Now the machines are going to get smaller and smaller and consuming less power to drive a vacuum tube. It needs more power, but to drive this transistor, we don't need much more power. It's very small. It can run uh, from a small power. Now uh, the technology is going to be enhanced in second generation. Why? Machines are going to get smaller and less power consumption. Even the performance is higher. Having one transistor replace 40. If you have 10 transistors, 4,000 tubes are replaced. So 10 transistors are taking small area. Then uh, this is the next idea you have to think of how they are going to be. Right. Then uh, they are the proofs here. They are going to get smaller, faster, cheaper, and more energy efficient. It is cheap as well. We have to use only one small transistor. Name energy efficient and more reliable than the first generation computers by the he's made it small number of equipments. That's the level of uh, the uh, transistors which are used in our second generation computers. Right. After that, we go to the next one called as um, still under the second generation. There we had the inputs using uh, punch cards, even paper tapes, as well as we had keyboards there during that time. And uh, the monitors were there as the output, even printouts were there. And uh, those machines are running with assembly language. So there was a programming language called as assembly. That was the uh, language to drive or to run the second generation computers. Some of the assembly based languages are COBOL, Fortran, these languages are based on assembly. Assembly is the main family. So this is what are the second generation languages are. So remember that they are going to be based on transistor technology. That's the idea. Right. Then next to that, these are the transistors, you know that. Then uh, third generation computers, 3G. So they are based on ICs, integrated circuits. So you have seen ICs again, right? In your O-level science, you did that. Thing. These are ICs. So when you go to the integrated circuit, they are with uh, many more pins. And into one IC, many more transistors are packed in. So this is a very small equipment. Inside that, thousands of transistors are there. We'll see that thousands of transistors are compound into a single IC. Around 40 tubes were uh, replaced by one transistor. 
Now the third generation came up with a gadget called as integrated circuit IC, which has many more pins. And this can uh, take the job of around 1000 transistors. And how powerful that is. 1000 transistors can uh, take the job of the integrated circuit. Then um, that's another big job uh, it is doing. Uh, why this is one transistor replace 40. When you go for 1000 transistors, we can have the micro uh, IC. Then IC is also like this. Then if you fix one IC, that replace job of 1000 transistors. So 40,000 vacuum tubes. Then uh, that's a level of uh, the ICs. Then you understand that how compact our equipments are. How small our equipments are now when it comes to third generation. And uh, how energy efficient. Here. So thousands of transistors are compounded into one single IC. Smaller, small file cabinets. Then cheaper, faster keyboard monitors there. And under the third generation, uh, those computers were with operating systems. Just like uh, MS-DOS, some old operating systems are there in those computers when it comes to the 3G or third generation computers. Really, uh, the importance is not the time, not the time period, the technology they use. If a company is going to be third generation, that's based on IC technology. That's the idea. Right. Uh, then fourth generation. So we are in fourth generation. Nowadays, we are in fourth generation. We are at the end of fourth generation, more so. They are using microprocessors. So microprocessors are the ones we are going to call them as CPU. We learned that they are with uh, registers, control unit, ALU. So thousands of ICs are packed into a single microprocessor. So we are happy with the performance of CPU today. So it is doing the job of around thousands of ICs. Then uh, that's why our portable devices, our laptops, our desktop computers are very small, consume very less power. So our modern machines are like that. So at the very beginning of fourth generation, we had uh, these machines, uh, Altair, this one in 1975, Apple II, IBM, uh, this one. And nowadays we have i5 computers, even i7 computers. Still, they are found under the fourth generation. And those computers are with GUI, you know that well, graphical interface, where we have the mouse, even icons, more user-friendly environment is supported by the fourth generation, why we all are in our fourth generation computers now. These are some CPUs or microprocessors. We know that. Then the fifth generation is the upcoming technology. Uh, in the near future, we are going to meet the fifth generation computers. That's based on AI, artificial intelligence. So then the technology used in fifth generation is AI. And uh, on those computers, we expect voice recognition. So that nowadays still there, these there, right? Though it's not that powerful, it's working. Me. So you can talk to your phone. You can talk, then they'll recognize it. And character recognition. So they are not perfect, but uh, still uh, they are used. The day all those are perfect, we can call that as the fifth generation. So in the near future, we'll uh, step into the fifth generation. There we have parallel computing, nanotechnology, grid computing. So they are still in research level, not that successful. Uh, that's why we are telling that we are still in fourth generation. Right. Right. Then uh, that's what are the generations of computers. Hope that you all are clear with that. Fine. Then. The development of the computer, you should know those machines, uh, especially the uh, Mark One, Univac, Infac, even uh, ENIAC. And then uh, later we came up with some other machines. And uh, next one is you have to uh, consider, consider about the generations of computers. 1G is going to be with tubes, 2G is going to be with transistors, 3G is going to be with ICs, 4G is going to be with uh, microprocessors. And fifth generation, the future technology is based on artificial intelligence, another upcoming technology. Right? So in, um, they are the summary. So I have added that summary as it is into the uh, tute. 
so by going through that you can cover up uh, the things i have added most important parts neglecting the unwanted areas but if you are going to talk about that we can just turn this history nebude so even i can uh, cover up that around uh, 20 40 hours but no need just uh, go for the important area you may be finding one mcq definitely from the history and even uh, some other writing questions for your structured paper sometimes so iot belongs to fourth generation yes iot uh, belongs to fourth generation hi right. then we are going to uh, the next section in this uh, history part what i did was this is not really history the computers uh, are going to be classified this is uh, another point that you should know the available computers are going to be classified or categorized based on different parameters one is according to the size or else according to the performance we are going to categorize the computers and another one is uh, according to the technology use according to the purpose first we'll go to the first categorization according to the size or performance so now we are going to categorize the computers into uh, four called as mainframe computers mini computers then are micro computers as well as super computers so these four categories are arrived based on the performance as well as the size of the computer or size of the machine as well as the performance of the machine when you go for this uh, according to performance we have mainframe computers like this uh, so mainframe computers are like this now these four categories of computers came based on the performance of the computer based on size of the computer so mainframe is called as the larger high performing computers they are performing well very large size computers called as mainframe mostly they are not used by you and me in our homes we can't they are very expensive and uh, these are going to be multi user computers what is the point behind multi user what is multi user multiple users can use it at a time many users can use it our laptop is not like that when i am using my laptop only i can use it no one else can come and use it then these are uh, also called as server systems in our level that's not good but i just give that word mostly if you go to a uh, computer like zoom here you are going to use a zoom application in your computer whenever you use a zoom application Uh, we need to have the internet connection why through the internet we all now there are around 20 people in the meeting then all the 20 people are connected through the internet into the zoom computer this is a mainframe computer why so from my home through the internet i am connected to zoom under the meeting id that they have given to me even you people are connecting the same zoom computer with the same meeting id another person and zoom will combine all of us into one meeting and uh, arranging us the way to continue the communication when it comes to zoom is this combining only us at this moment or multiple people from around the world how many meetings are going on at this moment can't count then what about the performance of this computer if the zoom is occupying a laptop like yours and mine can that be facilitated no ne even you know that your laptop or my laptop how many times will it get, will it get stuck when you are going to operate it starts talking how slow it is if it is going to be delivering services for thousands of people it will never happen then obviously uh, the mainframe uh, should be a powerful computer like this so we don't see that the we we, we 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 don't have them in our homes they are mainly using such systems or such organizations where they have 
a higher requirement of having uh, multiple users. That means all these cupboards are having big machines and they are combined together to make one computer, just like Zoom. Otherwise, don't believe that that's one computer, right? Like your home computer. No, many more computers are combined together and all will act as a single machine. That's how the mainframe computer comes. So they are using industries where they have the multi-user requirement not to connect two, three people, to connect thousands, millions of users simultaneously. And uh, you know about uh, the Google map? We are going to get map details. Again, there should be another mainframe coming, right? So connected to the internet, there should be a computer maintained by Google to give you the map details. How many people will use it? Not only you and me. So from around the world, uh, again, millions of people will access it. So this should be a mainframe company. Right? Then uh, that's the idea behind a mainframe. They are huge, powerful, high-performing computers. Main feature there is it's multi-user to serve millions, hundred thousands of users at a time. And obviously they are connected to the internet or some other big networks to serve them. Then high performing, special software, special processes are going on very fast. Likewise, we can't imagine how they are. And they are using special software. Seat. Then we go to the second category called as mini computers. Mini is also having similar features. They are still larger, high performing, multi user, but the number of users to use that at a time is lesser than the earlier. So earlier, we said that millions or oh, hundred thousand users at a time. For a time, only, uh, only means that much of our users are there. But there are requirements by some organizations where they have around thousand users at a time. Then uh, they are going to appoint or they are going to use a mini computer. That's a small scale of mainframe computer. It's not high performing like the mainframe, but better than our computers. This is like, like this. So you may find that this is the home computer that we have. Ne? And then I wait, I'll uh, show you the computer we have the, given by the internet. Uh, we'll say mini computers. Like this. Mini means uh, they are not, no, these are micro computers, right? That's wrong. Uh, mini, they have uh, misunderstood that word, Google people. Somewhere here. You see that uh, these are going to be mini. These are mainframe. So mini is going to be a uh, less performing computers. We can imagine that these are uh, the highest computer. Then uh, we have some lower level of computers coming into the picture which is going to be mid-range computers, right? Then uh, they are going to be uh, the mini computers like this. They are bigger than our usual computers, but still they are having the same requirement of multi-user, but having less number of people. Just like when it comes to Google map, we have to go for mainframe. But assume that our school, so our school is going to maintain a file server. So that uh, the files related to the school, just like the past papers, your mark sheet, your attendance are going to be available. In. And this is going to be connected to the school network, not into the internet even. So they are accepted only within the school itself. Now, uh, how many users are expected into this uh, computer? Around five, 10 at a time. Eh? And by that time, should the principal spend billions of money on buying such servers? No, they can go for a mini computer and uh, get the work done. So this is suitable for small scale businesses to share their resources among less number of people. So that's the benefit there. This is cheaper than that, less performing than that. So you have to uh, use that for your appropriate selection. Then you go to the next category called as microcomputer. So microcomputers are said to be as 
single user computers single user computers they are the computers that you and me are using I, our laptop can be used by only one user at a time single user okay. uh, even our desktop computer our smartphone they are said to be a single user computers only one user can use it at a time still they can be connected to the internet sometimes not they are running with your own softwares, media player, Zoom, you can run uh, whatever the games, giving the services for one news at a time. That's the microcomputer. That's it. Next, we are going to the other one called a supercomputer. So these are based on the performance, right? How performing they are, how large they are. Next, we go for the supercomputers. What is a supercomputer? Super means what is the meaning of super? Now, these days we have superstars, super dancers. What is that super word? Super says that superior. Yes, utmost. Then, uh, super computers are the definition is the superior computers available in the world regarding the performance. So they are the top ranking computers. So in my side, I may call them as top 10 computers in the world. Huge, powerful, extreme machines we have. They are called as supercomputers. So related to our supercomputer concept, they are obviously mainframes. They are the powerful computers in the world. Among them, among the mainframes we have, we will select the top 10 computers. The most performing computers, they are called as supercomputers. Especially they are used for special purposes, just like uh, this NASA work or whatever the arithmetic calculations by the um, astrological work and planet rotations and some other deep work, they are going to use it. So if you search for uh, supercomputers, you may get many different answers. So in Japan, uh, there are a computer for their specific works. Likewise, so then uh, in our level, we don't need to go in that deep. And then uh, what are supercomputers? Uh, you just search it. So there will be uh, many different articles given to you. They are the best performing computers in the world. So simply we can call them as top 10 computers. That's me. Right? They are obviously mainframe. Among the mainframes, the superior computers are called as supercomputers. Um, so does uh, the supercomputers come under the mainframe? Oh, they are supercomputers are special mainframe computers. They are definitely mainframe, but special, that means top 10 uh, computers are called as mainframe. Fine. Then uh, shall I write a small note? I have not given that uh, into the uh, printed version. Since it's quite technical, uh, you better take that note separately. Uh, right, we'll have the subtopic telling that classification of computers according to the size. Yes, we like uh, that as subtopic into the knot. Classification of computers according to the size. Subtopic is classification of computers according to the size and performance. That we like. That's a topic. So, can you tell uh, the correct order when categorizing according to the size? Mm, correct order, yes, then you can put the super on top. Super is the superior one, then mainframe, then mini, then micro, micro is the least one. Okay, we like. That's the of compress according to the size and performance. That we like. Based on the performance, based on the performance, There are, based on the performance, there are four categories there are four categories of there are four categories of computers. Four categories of computers. 
named as Willisem mainframe, mini, micro, and super. And we like to have the first one, mainframe computers. Are multi-user, are multi-user, mainframe computers are multi-user computers are uh, multi-user computers where where hundred thousand users where hundred thousand users come on millions of users hundred thousands of users come on millions of users Hundred thousands of users, comma millions of users can use the specific computer. The specific computer at a time. At a time. Next point. Therefore, therefore, they are. Therefore, they are always. Therefore, they are always connected to. Therefore, they are always connected to a large network. Always connected to a large network. O, O, to the internet. O, to the internet. Facilitating, facilitating to connect, facilitating to connect with millions of users at the same time at the same time right. next point they are they are large in size they are large in size comma more expensive and running with and running with Special software when compared to the other computer categories. Fine. And that's about uh, mainframe computers. We'll take some examples here. Example Zoom computer, Zoom computer to coordinate. All Zoom computer to coordinate all the online meetings from around the world. Uh, another example Google Map computer to provide maps around the world. To provide maps around the world. Right. So then that's about uh, the mainframe compress that we are going to cover here. So we'll uh, just write the next step to be mini computers. First one is mainframe, the other one is mini computers. Yes. Like uh, the next step to be mini computers. Mm -hmm. right. Under the light, mini computers are also multi user computers. Mini computers are also multi user computers. Mini computers are also multi user computers. Which can be accessed by which can be accessed by around around hundreds 
around hundreds, comma, thousands, and not say thousands, don't say thousands, hundreds, comma, tens. Yeah, so we uh, said about mini computers. Mini computers are multi user computers where hundreds, tens of users can use it at a time. All right, next point. They are less powerful. They are less powerful when compared to this is about mini compressors. Right? This is about mini compressors. They are less powerful when compared to the mainframe computers. Example. Example. A file server used in a school network, which can be accessed by around tens of users, tens, that means multiples of tens, right? 10, 25, even 15, which can be accessed by tens of users at a time, at a time. That's about mini computers. All right. Now we go to the third category, microcomputers. Another thing like R single user computers where only one user can use it where only one user can use it at a time example example laptops Laptops, smartphones, come on, desktop computers, laptops, smartphones, desktop, they are, then uh, we don't need to connect them into the networks, they are just ordinary computers of yours and mine. Uh, then you go to the next category called as supercomputers. Uh, yes, uh, before that, wait, wait, before supercomputers, we'll like one more point under the micro. So microcomputers are using ordinary software as new word, Excel, PowerPoint. They are used here in the micro. Earlier two are using some special software. We like that as well under the microcomputers. We like microcomputers, another point. Microcomputers, another point. The ordinary software, the ordinary software are running in the ordinary software are running in microcomputers are running in microcomputers fine then the next one are supercomputers the next category are top 10 supercomputers are top 10 computers in the world which are which are the most performing computers in the world. The supercomputers are used for special purposes which are having, which are having more powerful requirements. Then that's about uh, the classification of computers according to the performance. Then this is uh, known to you. Ne? So we uh, said about it. So when we go for the computers, we are going to classif classify them according to the size as well as the performance. Mainframe, mini, micro, and super computers. We have the note as well. So they are powerful computers. Micro computers are like this. Mini computers are in between micro and mainframe. Right. Now we are going to go for another categorization of computers uh, based on the technology that they are used. Based on the technology, what are those categorizations? Called as analog computers, digital and hybrid. Then uh, they are very simple. So we know uh, what those categorizations are. That will later the next subtopic, categorization based on the technology used. Next topic, classification of computers based uh, according to the technology used. Now, those categorizations are analog computers, then the other one is digital computers, as well as 
hybrid computers. So we know this well. Whenever a computer is said to be as analog, so analog concepts are we know well, uh, even now with digital. So analog means our signals are representing this order which are not restricted. This is analog. If you go for digital, this is going to be with uh, ones and zeros only. The digital signal. So the performance of these digital computers are completely running with ones and zeros only. Then what about the computers that uh, you and me use? Your desktop, your smartphone, are they digital, analog or hybrid? Our computers, laptop, desktop, are they hybrid? Are they digital? What are they? Am I? The computers that you and me use, are they with ones and zeros? Or are they not with ones and zeros? If so, are they digital computers or are they analog computers? Your laptop, your desktop, your smartphone, what about the processing there? That's completely with ones and zeros. We learned it. How, how many times we taught it? Then uh, our ordinary computers are digital. These are our desktop, even our laptop, smartphones. They are going to be digital. Then analog computers are not restricted to uh, ones and zeros. They are accepting the values 25, uh, 91, even 3.51 by the processor and handle them as it is. So really they are not the ordinary computers that you and me are using. They are some special type of machines which are specially made for specific works. So we don't need to worry about it. That simply learn the technology. If it is to be analog, they are, are using uh, analog signals. Do not use only two discrete levels. Not only, right? It has varieties of values. Use many levels. Then uh, most uh, these are used in uh, unit asking. They can't do multiple works. Widely used in simulating operations, aircraft, likewise. Then these are certain old technology not uh, used in our modern days, unlike the digital technologies. So digital computers are not like that. This is some uh, analog machine. So they are operating in the signals as they receive. But when it comes to digital, they are the computers we use today, handling uh, only ones and zeros, multitasking, more operations, uh, less power consumption. That's what uh, the digital is. Hurry. Then later we are going to talk about uh, another technology called as hybrid technology. So we know about hybrid. The hybrid vehicles came into the world. So then hybrid means the hybrid vehicles, they are running with electricity, the battery power as well as the fuel power. Both are there. So if the computer is going to be hybrid, it is accepting the analog signals as well as the digital signals both. That's a hybrid computer. So if you insert your numbers as it is, it can process as it is. If you insert digital signals, still the digital signal can be processed, ready for both. Still these are used for special purposes like analog systems, but our ordinary machines are the digital computers we have. That's the technology. Based on the technology, we are going to categorize them, not based on the performance, not based on the size, how big, how powerful they are. Very simple. Right? So if I have to uh, explain you the uh, text given here in the slides, this is a digital computer. Then hybrid means a modern technology. It can input and output both analog and digital signals. Both are accepted into it. Right. Uh, we like that as uh, under that one, classification of computers according to the technology used. Under that we like, based on, based on, based on, Digital, based on digital, comma, analog, based on digital, comma, analog, concepts, based on digital, comma, analog concepts, the computers, the computers are categorized. Uh, we'll go to the categorization, part A, analog computers, digital computers, hybrid computers. Right. Subtopic analog computers are accepting are accepting the analog values 
as it is by accepting the analog values as it is and proceed with the processing so that the analog computers so that the analog computers are used in special situations next one you like um, second one digital computers are accepting are accepting only ones and zeros to continue the processing the modern computers with uh, modern computers such as we say the modern computers such as laptops such as laptops comma desktops are handling digital computers are handling digital signals so that they are digital computers right. then the next one uh, we go for hybrid computers then we know hybrid is mix of analog and digital those are accepting both analog digital and they will proceed in that way you know the outputs are also given in both digital and analog format we like hybrid computers are special computers are special computers where are they accept where are they accept both digital and analog where are they accept both digital and analog signals to continue processing to continue processing next fine these are very rare these are very rare and used in these are very rare and used in special situations only special situations only right then you go to uh, the next categorization so then uh, we uh, told about the first three uh, classification of uh, computers according to size and uh, the uh, performance then classification of computers according to the technology use now the classification of computers according to the purpose of use based on the purpose we are going to classify them into these two categories general purpose as well as special purpose still we know that way now just get to know about the technology the keyword that's what uh, i want so one is called as general purpose other one is called as special purpose general purpose next one special purpose what are those purpose ne so then i am using that computer for general purpose generally i can use that for many other purposes to draw to uh, conduct meetings to prepare documents so generally he is using many different situations that's general purpose special purpose now that machine is used for specific work now uh, as i said earlier in our washing machine there will be a computer fix to operate the motors to operate the other equipments we have that's a washing machine runs with a computer then is this computer a special purpose or general purpose special purpose this is ready to operate only the washing machine controlling the motors and minimum things then uh, this is going to be special purpose computer which is made to cover specialized work but our desktop is general purpose with that uh, we can do uh, listen to music attend meetings preparing documents many more things can be done then uh, whenever we go for the washing machines or oh, um, uh, the special computers which is fixed into these situations these are also called as embedded computers what are embedded computers they are computers which are embedded into 
a certain electric appliance. If I go to the washing machine, that's doing the washing process. And inside that, there's a computer. This computer is a special purpose computer. Why? It can only perform the washing machine activities. And that is going to be an embedded computer. Why? This is embedded or this is added into an electronic appliance. They are doing one job, special job, unlike the other computers. Mostly they are going to be digital machines. This is what the uh, idea behind general purpose and special purpose. Even in our modern vehicles, we have computers to control the fold injection, to control the braking system. So there are computers running in. And uh, when it comes to our uh, micro oven, there are we have, inside we have. And most of the modern electronic equipments we use are with an embedded company in it. You are clear. So then uh, they are called as special purpose, while these called as general purpose. Okay, so you have the topic, classification of computers according to the purpose of use. Then we'll uh, have the non it have interrupted line, part A, general purpose, part B, special purpose. We'll just list them. And uh, subtopic, general purpose computer. Right. Uh, general purpose computers, they will like. The computers which can be used, the computers which can be used, the computers which can be used, for multiple, for multiple purposes, for multiple purposes, comma, multiple activities, multiple purposes, comma, multiple activities. Such as, such as, to play videos, to play videos, come on, to create documents, come on, edit photos, Come on, playing games. Right. Next point will light. Still under the general purpose. These are the ordinary computers. These are the ordinary computers, such as the laptop. such as the laptop, desktop, smartphone, and then you go to the next topic, topic, special purpose computers, special purpose computers. And that you like? Special purpose computers. These are manufactured, these are manufactured only to complete, these are manufactured only to complete a specific task, specific task, only to complete a specific task. Next fine. Mostly they are, mostly they are fixed into, mostly they are fixed into the general, mostly they are fixed into the general applications. Sorry, general electric, general electric equipments, general electric equipments to control, to control 
the activities to control the activities of the equipment to control the activities of the equipment example example the computer fixed into the the computer fixed into the washing machine fixed into the washing machine is controlling is controlling the activities of the washing machine activities of the washing machine only activities of the washing machine only within the site special purpose activities of the washing machine only within the site special purpose another example a computer a computer fixed into a microwave oven fix into a microwave oven right next one you like these are also called as these are also called as embedded computers these are also called as embedded computers within our side these are also called as embedded computers is not a side the computers the computers which are fixed into the computers which are fixed into a computer sorry fixed into uh a device is it means computer fixed into a device and then on the other way around when you go for the uh, special purpose computer are they more complex or simple than the general purpose computer i need to answer according to your assumption special purpose computer is that going to be simpler or complex than the general purpose it should be simple neither i is doing only a uh, one simple job that's all but our laptops are not like that they are ready to do a um, photo editing even video editing creating web pages many more so they are uh, having less complex features than the others that's what the embedded computers are okay and also we are going to call them as unit tasking only one task is done by that one control the process of the washing machine control the microwave control the vehicle fuel processing right then i will like as an explain special purpose computers special purpose computers are less complex special purpose computers are less complex than are less complex than the general purpose computers then the general purpose computers while while the special purpose computers while the special purpose computers are continuing special purpose computers are continuing unitasking are continuing unitasking within the side single task unitasking is a single task 
performing unique task in single task activities. In tasking activities or single task activities. Fine. So then that's uh, the idea behind uh, the general purpose as well as special purpose. Then uh, these are the classifications that we should know uh, in detail regarding uh, the areas that were given to us in our syllabus. Right. So then uh, we know this well. And uh, they are the areas that I want you to highlight uh, with this uh, regarding the missing part or the remaining part in our syllabus. Then uh, now uh, you are already uh, completing everything. So with uh, all the areas that should be there for the chapter one and chapter two. Now uh, in this tutorial, we have the questions given. Uh, there are some sample questions starting and the summary is there. The summary will summarize what we did, covering the most important points of the topics. Then uh, the details are there in your note. Right? Uh, and here we have sample questions. So I'm, thinking, uh, I'm requesting you and I have requested already even to do these questions uh, on your own. Have you tried them? So from the sample questions uh, up to the past of the questions, did you do them already? No, yes. So then um, honestly, if you are doing them on your own, by that time you can uh, look at the notes, no problem. Why this not examining? So when you look at the, the notes, it will revise your knowledge what you learned around uh, two, three months ago. Otherwise, you don't read it. Even if you have read it, uh, that's a real uh, expected work. So before doing these questions, if you can read the notes and brush it up, then uh, take these questions. That's the best way. Even uh, if you are going through the questions, if you uh, don't remember what it is, you refer to that area in the book, read it, and write your answer. Right, so then uh, I hope that uh, you may do that. Will you? Oh, have you done this? So no reply. Right. Then uh, again, uh, on the other way around, I feel that uh, this is not the best time to start paper discussion. Is it? Yes. Then um, what I'm telling here is by next week. Next week uh, is the paper discussion, right? The question. Yes. Then uh, there are, uh, you may start from the sample questions. So I'm starting from the sample questions. They are in page eight. So then do all the questions, including the MCQs there in page number 10, page number 11, uh, and page number 12, 13 likewise. So then uh, next week, uh, we could do, a, we may do a, the sample questions only. We may not have enough time to cover the past papers. Then uh, when you are doing that question, if you find any missing point, if you find any doubt, refer to the book and find that answer. Then in that way, complete them and uh, be ready for the next day session. That is complete your paper discussion. This is a homework I'm giving you from the day I start uh, the session. So I have not given any particular homework up to now. These are risky and responsible homework you have to do. Do these sample questions on your own. It won't take two hours for you to do it. Right? Then uh, that will brush up your knowledge and we'll discuss them. Otherwise, if you just come with empty hands for day, this is completely not productive, right? That's up to you. So you must uh, do this uh, and come to the session on the next week. Otherwise, uh, it's completely useless. In my side, no matter. I'm just doing this. But uh, I don't give you time to do these questions in the class. Otherwise, it will take a long time. No. So uh, try them and attend the session, definitely. Uh, are we uh, need to have another separate book? No need for that. So you may uh, do the answers on your same book. And uh, again, if you are not sure, leave a certain space there. Even if you are sure, leave a certain space there. Sometimes uh, there'll be uh, discussions where I'm going to give you extra discussions, extra notes. If so, uh, if you have space, uh, at least one or two rules, that will be okay for you. Or else you may use a sticky note and uh, write that part and paste it. So you can uh, fill that one. Uh, if you have a separate book, that's also good. Uh, but it's up to you to decide what to do. Right? So then uh, some people have uh, used different patterns. It's up to you. But do this serious for the right. This is the most important part, right? This sort of questions will be there in the paper. That's the main use of mo most uh, productive position. Into the paper, you are going to write answers, right? This is a practice. Then um, that's a job. So then um, hope that you may do all these questions. So if you don't have time, uh, don't touch the possible questions now. 
the reason is uh, if you have time complete that i'm not not to say that don't do it at least you have to do the sample questions if you have time do the past papers why your next the other week i can start the past paper discussion and then uh, we can uh, cover up the next chapter so then grabbing the theory knowledge is not enough definitely you should know you have done your levels and you know the value of doing paper discussion right so it's a very important thing right so then uh, okay so then that's what our idea but in the discussion i don't mark this correct this wrong this wrong no i'll discuss the question and giving you a concept behind that how you need to think of like us this will be another session right don't think that i say that ah, the first one the second one is the answer this one is the answer no 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 this is a discussion so therefore uh, there are a lot to learn uh, behind this uh, this is very important okay then i'll stop here and uh, hope to continue with the uh, paper discussion especially the some paper, uh, paper questions from the <coughs> next week uh, at the usual time uh, five o'clock fine okay then i'll stop here and uh, we'll continue like that so do them and uh, attend the session next week that's your job right. i'll stop here hope to see you on uh, next tuesday good night then. Thank <laughs> you.